What's up, witches? It's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about Midsummer, or if you're Wiccan, Litha. First, I need to say that I'm recording outside, so you might hear birds or the several dogs that are in my neighborhood bark, but it's such a nice day outside today that I needed to take advantage of it. So, I'm recording outside, there might be some background noise, but that's okay, right? Uh, as long as I'm taking advantage of the sunshine while it's still here. So as I said, we are talking about midsummer. For those that don't know, midsummer is also called the summer solstice and the day that it is celebrated in the northern and the southern hemispheres are opposite. And the date actually depends because a solstice is an astronomical event. So it typically ranges in the Northern Hemisphere anywhere from June 20th to June 22nd. And when we are celebrating the summer solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere, those that are in the Southern Hemisphere are celebrating the winter solstice. So this year, 2020, summer solstice will be on June 20th, which if you're watching this when this video comes out, that will be next week. So today I'm going to speak briefly about Litha, which is the celebration that happens at the summer solstice in many Wiccan traditions, but I'm mainly going to be focusing on Irish tradition and history behind the celebration of Midsummer and the summer solstice, and this is because I'm an Irish pagan. <laughs> That's Dixie. So briefly, as we speak about Litha, within Wicca, Litha is a celebration of the summer solstice. On the surface, it's as simple as that. In Wicca, the god and goddess are in full swing with their romance. The goddess is heavily pregnant, and this is shown in the abundance and the prosperity of the crops that are currently growing in the summer season. The god is the protective and nurturing summer sun and together they bring about this change this turning point at summer solstice okay there was a glare on my webcam um i i think it's just being caused from the sun coming over the top of my webcam because it's gone now but you can see it there hello that's a glare uh yeah perks of recording outside anyway some correspondences that I've seen in Wicca for Litha or the summer solstice include bees, butterflies, and birds, the colors gold, red, orange, blue, and yellow, all early summer fruits and vegetables, as well as sweet treats like honey cakes, which if you stick around and you make sure you're subscribed to my channel, podcast listeners, the link will be in the show notes. Uh, on Thursday, I will be showing a new recipe that I have for midsummer cinnamon sweet cakes. Uh, they're little cupcakes with buttercream frosting and they're low carb. So make sure you're subscribed so you can get that recipe or just follow my website. Some other foods and drinks that are associated with Litha in Wicca include strawberries, um, sun tea, and any other type of herbal tea. Then there are some different plant correspondences and those include mugwort, chamomile, rose, lily, and oak. So as I said, I'm not really going to cover the whole history of Litha in Wiccan practice. I'm sure there are several videos on YouTube, several different podcasts out there and websites that have a plethora of information on Litha and a Wiccan perspective. I want to cover Midsummer and the summer solstice from an Irish pagan perspective. Now, before we go through and talk about all of the things that I have written down on my notes, I just need to give a big thank you to the same resource I always use for Irish paganism, Laura O'Brien. They have done so much work around gathering resources and making sure that it's available to those of us who don't have access to those things that are in Ireland. And a lot of the information from this particular episode comes from Laura O'Brien and bouncing off of their sources too. So definitely if you're interested in Irish paganism or Irish spirituality at all, 
check out their website and their YouTube. I will leave all of the links in the description and in the show notes for you as well. So obviously in speaking about midsummer, the first thing that we know that we're celebrating is the summer solstice, the astronomical event where it is the longest day of the year. It is the day when there is the most sunlight per hours in a day. And it has deep spiritual meaning for a lot of different cultures and religious faiths around the world. But today I want to talk about Irish paganism. It seems to me in what I've read that Midsummer in Ireland is now celebrated as St. John's Eve, and this appears to be a shift from paganism to Catholicism, but I can't verify this with 100% certainty, so make of that what you will. But it's interesting, for me anyways, to note the similarities between the days of St. John's Eve versus Midsummer and the different practices in both sort of celebrations. So I have here some notes, um, and all of the links for these sources will be in the description and in the show notes, but I have some notes that come from Irish people that talk about the different traditions and practices that they held or that they can remember being held when Midsummer came around. So I'd, I'd like to read them to you. On June 23rd, bonfires lit in each village in Ireland. The children gathered turf from house to house. The people would sit around the bonfire and tell stories. Then a bone was thrown into the middle of the fire. Now, according to Laura O'Brien, the throwing of the bone into the fire can be seen as a form of sacrifice, but it's not something that we know for certain. Before the people left the bonfire, some ashes from the fire were thrown into the crops. Another tradition says that the old people used to send the younger members with burning brands from the bonfire to each field in which a crop was planted. The blazing branch was flung into the fields and the crops were not supposed to do any good unless and until this was done. If any crop were doing badly, the old people were wont to say, wait till after bonfire night. You will see a change for the better after it. That's interesting to me because for me, midsummer is a catalyst. It is a turning point in the wheel of the year, but also in in life. Uh, it is a turning point in the wheel of the year, but it it's also an energetic shift. And after midsummer is really when the bounty and everything starts to grow and blossom in time for the harvest season in the fall. So we have midsummer as this catalyst that really gets things moving and it appears that it was tradition to take the ashes from the bonfire and throw it onto the crops or to take a stick from the bonfire and toss it out into the crops to the way I interpret it as bringing the energy of the sun from the longest day of the year and adding that to the crops to help ensure that the bounty is prosperous and there is enough to go around in the fall and winter months when the people would need it the most. Another story recalls that bonfires were lighted on St. John's Eve. Nearly every house had a little bonfire. The young people of a townland also assisted in gathering material for one real big bonfire where all gathered around. Many sports and pastimes were indulged in round the fire. When the fires had burned out, those present took away the burnt cinders and scattered them through the fields of growing crops. This was believed to bring good luck and prosperity. Again, we can see here that we have another instance of taking the energy from the bonfire from summer solstice and giving it to the crops and the things that the people were trying to grow. St. John's Eve falls on the 23rd of June every year. There used to be some customs carried out on that night. One was lighting a big fire when the cattle would be coming out and drive them as near as possible to it so that they would go through it. Another custom was shaking Easter water at the four corners of a tillage field. This was done up to about 15 years ago. Another custom that was done on that evening was putting eggs in a hole in the wall of the cow house to keep the cream good. It is over 40 years since this was done. So these are just some traditions that 
appear to have carried over from Irish paganism and spirituality into Catholicism in Ireland. And if you look at them closely, you can see that they do have a lot of pagan roots to them. There's a whole idea behind the, the fire and, and making sure that the potency of the sun on the summer solstice was collected and used for the greater good of the community. In this case, the ashes were collected or a stick was collected from the bonfire and it was used in the crops and the fields of the peoples and the food that they were growing. Based on these customs, we can use them in a modern sense to align ourselves with the natural cycles of the world. If you grow your own food, this is a great time to have yourself a little bonfire or just a fire and use the ashes from your fire from summer solstice and scatter them around your crops to help them blossom and be fruitful. If you don't grow your own food, that's fine. Um, not many of us do. But if you don't grow your own food, you can use the energy of summer solstice to help cultivate and blossom those things inside of you that you want to help grow and cultivate. Um, maybe your sense of kindness or your generosity or even different things that you want to learn. You can use the energy of the summer solstice to pull that into yourself and give yourself a little spiritual boost. So Irish tradition and Irish spirituality, they are living traditions. And this is why a lot of the information that I get on Irish paganism and that I share comes from people like Laura O'Brien. They are there in Ireland. They grew up there. They are native to Ireland and to those spiritual practices. So I feel that they're good re they are good resources and they are the people that we should be learning from if we are going this route. So this is why I always use Laura O'Brien, their website and their sources to help get the information out there too, as well as how I use it in my own practice. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you how you should practice or how you should celebrate the summer solstice. Celebrate it however your tradition calls you to. If you're Wiccan, celebrate Litha. Um, just keep in mind that some of the things that you might do have roots outside of Wicca, and it might do you good to research that a little bit and find the cultural significance of what you're doing. For me personally, um, my family and I are going to be driving across the country on Midsummer Day. We move that week. I don't know how I'm going to celebrate Midsummer on the road. Uh, I, you know, I'll probably pack some snacks to take, some berries and some oranges. Um, I won't really be able to have any sort of feast on Midsummer Day. I will, even though we're going to be spending most of the day in the car, I will try whenever we stop to either get gas or to just take a break from driving. I'll do what I can to sit in the sunlight and meditate on the catalyst that is midsummer and how I can use the energy from midsummer and the summer solstice moving forward through the rest of the year. I will be celebrating the summer solstice, just not in the way I would want to. I will probably have some sort of celebration once we get completely moved and settled, depending on how long that takes. It's going to take a couple of days just to get there, but I want to at least have a nice dinner with a summer solstice theme. If you are in a position where you can celebrate the summer solstice, I recommend doing something with fire, having a bonfire, or just lighting a fire in your fireplace if it's not too hot, or if you have a fire pit, or even just a candle will work and bring the energy of the sun into your home. And I also recommend cooking a meal that incorporates foods that are in season in your area. 
So like if strawberries aren't in season in your area, then I wouldn't correspond strawberries with the summer solstice. Um, it is much more helpful and much easier to be in tune with the world around you if you take advantage of what you have around you. So look into what's in season in your area, the fruits, the vegetables, what is currently blossoming, what is currently growing, and use those in your midsummer dinner or feast or celebration. If you do grow your own food and you decide that you can have a fire of some sort, give your plants a little bit of extra love at this time. Spread those ashes around. Give them a little bit of extra water or however you care for your plants to give them the boost of the sun from the summer solstice. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this short little episode was helpful to you and maybe gives you some ideas on how you can celebrate midsummer or the summer solstice or litha or whatever you call it and i will see you next time bye for now as always i want to give a huge shout out to my patrons over on patreon thank you jess and thank you rose at wickenhomestead.com if you'd like to help support my work here at Round the Cauldron, please feel free to join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash roundthecauldron for as little as a dollar a month, and you can get patron-exclusive content. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, give the video a thumbs up, and I will see you back on Thursday for my next video on how to make midsummer cupcakes.